In this lecture, there is one last thing which I want to discuss about use effect react hook and that is the cleanup function of use effect hook. From the callback function of use effect, we can also return a value and this value must be a function and this function can be used to do some cleanup work. So we call this function as cleanup function. Let's understand this with an example. Inside this login component, inside the callback function of this use effect, what we are doing is we are validating the email and password entered by the user. So this logic here, it will be executed for every keystroke we make inside the email and password field. And to prove this, what I'm going to do is here, I'm going to use a console.log statement. And inside this console.log statement, let's say validating form input. Now, if I save the changes, if we go to the web page, and if I open developer console, let's clear everything here. And you will notice that as soon as I start typing inside this email field or this password field, this message validating input form has been logged here. Okay, so every time I enter a key in this input field, you can see that that message is being logged here in the console. And same is true for this password field as well. So this proves that this logic here, which we are writing inside the callback function of use effect, it will be executed for each keystroke which we make inside the email field or the password field. Now, that's not a big problem here because the function execution here is quite fast. But the logic which we write inside the callback function, sometimes that might cause a problem. That's because for every keystroke in the email field and password field, this entered email and this entered password state will change. And for each state change, this login component it will be re-rendered in the web page in the UI. And this is something you might not want to do for every keystroke. Now imagine you are writing some complex logic inside this callback function, inside the callback function of this use effect. For example, let's say you are sending an HTTP request to the server where you check if a username is already in use. So you are writing that HTTP request logic inside this callback function. Now there, you will not want to send an HTTP request for each keystroke because if you do that, that means you're going to be sending a lot of requests and this might cause a lot of unnecessary network traffic. So that's something you might want to avoid. Even this code here, which we have inside this callback function, this code also we don't want to execute for every keystroke we make inside the email or password field. So the solution here could be that we can collect a certain amount of keystroke or we can wait for a certain time duration when some keystroke are already made and then we can execute our logic. For example, what we can do is we can allow user to type something in this email and password field. But we are not going to change the state for each keystroke. Once the user has stopped typing, we will wait for 50 milliseconds and then we will run this logic which we have inside this callback function. So for example, let's say the user starts typing the email address. Okay. And once he stops typing, we will wait for 500 milliseconds and then we will run the logic which we have inside this callback function, inside the callback function of this use effect. And we will do the same thing for this password field as well. In the password field, we will allow user to type something. And once he stops typing, we will wait for 500 milliseconds and then only we will run this logic. So this is a technique which is called as debouncing. Here, we want to debounce the user input. We want to make sure that we are not doing something on every keystroke, but once the user made a pause during typing. And with use effect, that's actually easy to implement. For that, what we can do is, we can use the set timeout function of JavaScript. Now this set timeout function takes two parameters. The first parameter is a callback function. So for that, I'm using this arrow function syntax. And the second parameter is the time interval. Here, let's pass the time interval of 500 milliseconds. Now, let's go ahead and let's move this logic. So I will cut this logic from here and I will paste it inside the callback function of set timeout. So now what we are doing is we are validating the form after a 
time interval after the time interval of 500 milliseconds. Let's save the changes. Let's go to the browser. Let me clear everything here. Let's also refresh the page. Okay, so now when I type something in this email text box, let's say A, you will notice that after 500 milliseconds only, this message has been logged here. Now, if I type something else here, after 500 milliseconds, it has been logged here. If I type something else, it will wait for 500 milliseconds and then only it will write this logic. But still, this logic is getting executed for each keystroke. Even though it is getting executed after a time interval, but it is still getting executed for each keystroke. And this makes sense because for each keystroke, a timer will be set, which will be executed after 500 milliseconds. Now, what we can do here is this set timeout function returns an integer value. And that value is unique for each timer. So we can assign that value to a variable. So here I'm going to create a variable. Let's call it value. So every time this set timeout function will be called, a timer will be created. And that timer will have a unique integer value. So we are assigning that value to this value variable. So the trick here is we can clear this timer after every keystroke. So for example, if I go back to our web page, let me refresh the page here. When I type something inside this field, let's say A, a timer will be created. Now what I want is, as soon as I type something else, let's say B, I want to clear the previous timer and I want to create a new timer for this value B. Again, if I type something else, let's say C, then I want to clear the timer which we have created for this value B and create a new timer for this value C. So in this way, we have only one ongoing timer at a time and therefore only the last timer will complete and as long as the user keeps on typing, we always clear all other timers and therefore we only have one timer that completes and that completes after 500 milliseconds. So let's see how we can implement this. To implement this logic, we can use the cleanup function of use effect. So as I mentioned earlier, the callback function of use effect can return a value and that value must be a function and this function is called as cleanup function. So here what we can do is from within this callback function, we are going to return a function and to create the function, I'm going to use this arrow function syntax, but you can also use anonymous function or you can also use named functions. Now this function here, this function will execute as a cleanup process. Now this function, this cleanup function, this gets called before the logic of the callback function. Now keep this point in mind. This cleanup function, this function will be executed before any logic which we write inside the use effect callback function. So here, this function will always get executed before this logic, except for the first time. So when this use effect will execute for the first time, in that case, this logic will be executed first. But after that, whenever this callback function will be executed, whenever the callback function which we are passing to this use effect, whenever it will be executed, first it will execute this cleanup function. And after that only, this logic will be executed. And to prove this, inside the body of this callback function, let's write another console.log statement. And here let's say cleanup function executed. Let's save the changes here. Let's go to the web page. Let's refresh the page and let me clear everything here. Okay, so let's refresh the page again. So here you can see it has logged validating form input. So for the first time, when this use effect function will be called, its callback function will be executed. And for the first execution, it will execute this logic. Okay, it has not executed this cleanup function. But for next time onwards, this logic here will be executed first and then only this logic will be executed. Let's see that. Let's go to the web page. Let's type something in this email field. So I type A. You will notice that cleanup function executed and after that only this validating logic has been executed. If I type something again, again the cleanup function has been executed first and after that only the validating logic has been executed. So always keep this point in mind. 
when we specify a cleanup function inside the callback function of use effect for the first time when the callback function of use effect runs it executes this logic the logic which we write inside the callback function it does not execute the cleanup function but from the second time onwards the cleanup function will be executed first and then only rest of the logic inside that callback function will be executed also remember that the cleanup function will also run whenever the component inside which you are using the use effect hook that will be reused so now what we can do is we can clear this timer inside this cleanup function so for that we can use clear timeout function again this clear timeout is a javascript function it is not react specific and to this we can pass this value so this value variable it is going to store the unique identifier which the set timeout timer will return so we want to clear that timer using that unique identifier so we can pass it to this clear timeout with this let's save the changes let's go to the web page let's refresh the page and now you will notice that when i type something here so for example let's say test at test.com so you can see for every keystroke now this validating form input is not being logged here that means this logic here this logic is not executing for every keystroke this logic is only getting executed when the user pauses typing and 500 milliseconds after that that message is being logged so this message is being logged in the console okay let's do the same thing in this password field so if i type something here you will notice that i am being typing it but nothing has been logged here only when i stop typing 500 milliseconds after that this message has been logged let me show you that one more time let's clear everything let's provide an email okay and here as soon as i start typing you will notice that that validation message has not been displayed yet once i stop typing 500 milliseconds after that this message has been displayed so this proves that this logic now is being executed only when the user stops typing and after 500 milliseconds this logic is being executed now here you can also increase or decrease this time interval according to your need so i hope with this example the use of cleanup function in use effect hook is clear to you so here in this logic instead of validating the user input if we would have been sending an http request we would have sent only one request instead of multiple requests for each keystroke and this is the advantage of using a cleanup function inside the use effect hook this is all from this lecture if you have any questions feel free to ask it